Are you looking to build a computer specifically designed for production work? Then you've come to the right place. Today I will be building a production workstation with a budget under $900. So let me start by saying that I'm building this computer more for video production than music production or audio production. Uh, the reason being is audio production does not need as many resources as video production. If you're a video editor, you know how strenuous that is on your computer. So I, I wanted to build it designed for that and I knew that no matter what, any computer that can handle video editing will be able to handle music production or audio production with no problem. So when doing my research, I found that the CPU is the most important part for a video production workstation. That meant that I was going to pick out my CPU first and then build around that. I was first looking at Intel processors because I knew that Premiere Pro, my main video editing software, uses Intel's integrated graphics. After further researching and evaluating my budget, I knew that an i7 was a little out of my price range and with Ryzen's new 3000 series, I knew that I would get a lot more bang for my buck. When looking at the $100 price difference between the i7 8700 and the Ryzen 5 3600, it didn't seem worth it. Plus adding in another $30 to the Intel processor to replace the unfortunately bad CPU cooler. After settling on the Ryzen 3600, I decided to move on and choose what motherboard I wanted to use. This brought up another issue because the Ryzen 3000 series is fairly new, so a lot of motherboards are not supporting it yet. I was a little bit weary going with the B450 because I knew that there were some compatibility issues with the Ryzen 3000 series, and a lot of the BIOS updates weren't going as planned. Luckily, there was a micro center within driving distance of me. This allowed me to go to the store, look at the box, and make sure that Ryzen 3000 Ready sticker was on the box and ready to go. As an added bonus, Micro Center also had a deal going on where if you buy a processor and motherboard compatible, then you would also get $50 off. I was already looking at the ASRock B450 Pro 4. This seemed like it gave me the most bang for my buck. It allowed me to have two M.2 slots, which was very important to me, and it also gave me all the in and out ports that I needed. This was also one of the only affordable full ATX motherboards that I could find for under $100. This allowed me to have all the things I need and additional ports for future growth. The next most important thing to me was the RAM. I knew I wanted 32 gigs with the option of upgrading 64 in the future, which the ASRock motherboard does provide. I was able to find 32 gigs of Ripjaw memory on sale for $145. This memory also has a speed of 3200, which is great for a Ryzen build because Ryzen really likes to have fast RAM. Now next up is the graphics card. Now CPU was most important to me, but I know the GPU is usually the most expensive part of a computer. Even if I spent the same amount on the GPU as the CPU, uh, that's really valuing the CPU because a lot of people spend at least twice as much on their GPU than their CPU. Uh, of course, that's because a lot of builders are designing it for video games, which your graphics card is everything when you're a gamer. I do want to play some games I don't get to play very often, so it's not that important to me, but uh, the 1660 Ti is definitely going to allow me to play any games that uh, I would want to play at a reasonable level. I don't really care to play at 4K or anything like that. so. Um, this will be more than enough for me, and I think it will be future-proof as well. Next up is storage. Now, this is obviously very important for video production because video files are huge. I also wanted really fast storage. I knew I, didn't wanna, I wanted to avoid mechanical hard drives as much as possible. I've been using mechanical hard drives forever now. I've never had a solid-state drive of any kind. Um, so I said, hey, what the heck, let's go all out and go not only solid state, but NVMe solid state uh, in the M.2 format, which is currently the fastest storage you can get. And my motherboard supports two of them. 
Now, one of the ports are a little bit slower, and I believe it uses still uses the SATA 6. It's not a PCIe um, port, but that's okay because I will be using the slower M.2 for my mass storage, and I will be running my operating system and programs on the faster M.2 slot. Uh, for the faster M.2 slot that will be hosting my operating system and all my programs is going to be the SX8200 Pro. Now this is a TLC cache system which isn't the fastest in the world but is also still very good and very reliable. I also wanted two drives because when editing it's good to have your software separate than your program files and cache files because that's going to allow you to edit faster. I found a one terabyte NVMe by Intel for very cheap. Now this is QLC which is currently the slowest of the NVMe's. Anyone that's familiar with these drives knows that they use an SLC cache which allows them to be very fast up to a certain point. So I know that video files are very big and when I'm bringing those over to a backup drive, let's say I'm copying over 300 gigs to an external hard drive to back things up, it might be kind of slow because once the cache runs out on the QLC, it's going to drop significantly. If you're interested in learning more about storage solutions for production work, let me know in the comments and maybe I can make a separate video that will go in more detail into that because there's quite a lot. So the last thing on my list was the power supply in the case. Now the power supply is something that's typically looked at as an afterthought and is overlooked quite a bit. I didn't want to spend too much on my power supply because I wanted to put my money towards performance, but at the same time I didn't want to cheap out on it because if you cheap out on your PSU, then you could be putting your other components at risk. You don't want to get a cheap power supply. I thought 500 watts was going to be enough for me, especially because I'm not going to be um, gaming very often and doing things that would be really um, power consuming, which a lot of the power draws can be coming from the graphics card because I believe the processor only takes about 65 watts, which is pretty efficient. And I believe components are only going to be getting more efficient, so I think it's pretty future-proof as well. So I also decided to go with a bronze certification for my power supply. This seemed to be the best middle ground in my price range, so it's still very efficient, but uh, it's not going to cost me as much as a gold certified power supply would cost. Lastly, we have our case, which is more of an aesthetic choice. It's more of a subjective opinion. Of course, you want it to fit all your components, and you also want it to have great airflow. This isn't a cheap build by any means, but I thought spending much more than $50 on a case just for some extra airflow or a more aesthetically pleasing design was a little silly for what I was trying to do, which is to build the most powerful computer I could for under $900. For $50, the Monster 2 by Raid Max seemed to check all those boxes for me for the price that I wanted to spend. So now that I have my components, I'm gonna go ahead and build this thing. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll conclude on how the build went and maybe give you some options on things you could swap out that might save you a little money and fit your needs a little bit better. Uh, but first, we need to watch some overdramatic B-roll footage or else it wouldn't be a proper computer build video. So there's a couple things that I've noticed being left out of computer building budgets that I think 
it's important for you to know about. Uh, the first one being the operating system. Now, I didn't add the operating system into the price of my computer because I was able to get it for free. I had an old laptop running Windows 7, and I was able to upgrade that to Windows 10 for free, take that product key code, and put it into my new computer. So if you don't have a license, you're gonna have to include that in your budget. If you're going with Windows 10, you can either buy it from Microsoft's website, which is gonna cost over $100, and completely put your computer in a whole nother category, or there are various websites that I've seen that sell Windows 10 license codes for around $30. Um, that's what I would do if I didn't have a license already. The only negative from not buying it directly from Microsoft that I'm aware of is that you're not going to get Microsoft support. So if you call them and you need help with your Windows, then they're not going to help you. Uh, I've never called them and I don't know anyone that has, but if that's something that you want, then go ahead and pay the extra money. Another thing to consider is Wi-Fi. Now if you're in an office that has convenient Ethernet ports, then you're good to go. Now if you want to have Wi-Fi, then you're going to need to buy a sound card that plugs into your motherboard's PCI port and gives your computer Wi-Fi. Now these can be around $40 for a good one, that's what I would spend on one. But I actually didn't even need to spend that $40 because I had an old router that I was no longer using that I reprogrammed to be a receiver which acts as my Wi-Fi card, so that saved me some money as well. Another option is some motherboards have Wi-Fi built in, so if you know you're going to be spending that extra money on a Wi-Fi card, maybe look into some of those motherboards that have it built in. Another thing I would like to mention that's pretty obvious is mouse, keyboard, and monitor. Now, I already had those, so that wasn't included in my budget, and I'm sure most of you probably already have those too, but if you don't have those, then that's another thing you need to include in your budget. So now that I've talked about all the components you need to get yourself up and running, I just want to also mention a couple things that might save you money for your specific needs. So if you're only doing audio production, you do not need 32 gigs of RAM. I would still look into RAM speed, but 16 will be plenty for you. This will save you at least $60. Now another thing that's not important for audio production is a graphics card. And this is one of the most expensive components. So if you're only doing audio production, no video production, no gaming or anything like that, then don't spend much on a graphics card. You just need enough that's gonna give you a nice display. And I would say a GTX 1050 would be more than enough. That's gonna be only $150 new, which will save you over $100. And that will be plenty for audio production. So the last thing I would change on this if I was just doing audio production is the second hard drive. So I have a one terabyte solid state drive, which is super useful because I'm doing video editing and I'm transferring big files back and forth pretty consistently. Now with audio production, the files are a lot smaller, so that speed isn't gonna be as noticeable and it's gonna save you a lot of money. So I paid $85 for this one terabyte. You could find a mechanical hard drive for under $50. Uh, as long as it's 7,200 RPM, then you should be good and you won't notice that much of a difference. The other two, like graphics card and the RAM, you won't notice any difference. So there's really no reason to spend the extra money if you're just doing audio production. So this isn't a gaming channel. I'm a casual gamer at best, but I just want to also bring up if this was going to be a gaming computer, what you would want to change. I think this will be beneficial even if you're not doing a gaming computer just so you kind of understand what you should be spending your money on. Now if this was going to be a gaming computer, I would also swap out the RAM. I would probably even go down to 8 gigs of RAM to start with and then maybe go up to 16 if I felt like I needed it. But you'd still want fast RAM, uh, that's going to help your gaming performance quite a bit, but having 32 gigs of RAM is, is just silly, it's going to be way too much. Just like with the audio production workstation, I would swap out the second SSD for a mechanical hard drive. The reason being, you're going to notice it taking a little bit longer to initially boot your game, but once you're in the game, there won't be any performance difference, so I don't think it's worth spending the extra money for that. I would take the money I would save from swapping those hard drives, and the money I would save from swapping the RAM and the CPU and take all that money and put it into my graphics card because that's really the heart of your system for a gaming rig. You're going to want to get the best graphics card you could possibly get. As long as the other components aren't bottlenecking that graphics card, 
then you're good to go. This video is a little different than what I've done in the past, so if you want to see more of this, let me know. If you're new to this channel, I typically do one-man band covers and original performances, as well as music production tutorials to help you produce the music you want to produce, as well as gear reviews such as guitar pedals or anything else that makes noise. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next one.